But there is a fear that as we lift the lid off the food industry, we may discover more than we bargained for. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at controversies revolving around restaurants, fast food chains, and food brands that might have escaped your memory. Once we remind you, you might think twice before eating your next meal. We've been asking Subway questions about their chicken. We sent them our DNA results, got no clear answers. Number 10. Why Bubble Yum is so chewy Hitting the scene in 1975, it wasn't long until bubble yum was being chewed in schoolyards across America. How about this bubble yum? Hmm, says super yum. This must be new. Bubble yum, huh? Looks good. Maybe I'll try a piece. By its second year on the market, a rumor started to spread regarding the secret ingredient that gave the bubble gum its soft, chewy property, spider eggs. Today we have to talk about crusty brand chew goo gum like substance. We knew it contained spider eggs, but the hantavirus, well, that really came out of left field. In Florida, manufacturer Lifesavers hired private detectives to track down the story's source, but no luck. In any case, gossip was popping on the playgrounds from New York to Los Angeles. Another rumor claimed that the gum caused cancer. While reports vary on how much this affected sales, Lifesavers was compelled to take out ads dispelling the rumor. That seemed to do the trick, as Bubble Yum remains a childhood favorite, with the spider rumor now a distant memory. What's better than Bubble Yum? Now yummy your Bubble Yum! Number 9. Szechuan Sauce Revolt The past few years have been so chaotic that it's easy to forget a simpler time, when a Szechuan sauce shortage was the most prominent controversy. It's chaos at a McDonald's over, of all things, Szechuan sauce. Customers crowd the counter demanding the Szechuan dipping sauce for their McNuggets. In 1998, McDonald's added Szechuan sauce to the menu as a tie-in for Disney's Mulan. The limited-time item fell into obscurity until Rick and Morty referenced it in 2017. They, they created a new sauce for the McNuggets called Szechuan sauce, and it's delicious! And then they got rid of it, and now it's gone. This is the only place we're going to be able to try it, is in my memory. The buzz inspired McDonald's to resurrect the sauce six months later, but they made two massive miscalculations. It'd only be available for one day and restricted to select locations, which were given about 20 packets each. Fans acted about as civilly as you'd expect, with one Los Angeles location calling the cops on 300 customers demanding their sauce. The sauce has since returned a few times, but in larger quantities. Bear with me with this breaking news, Szechuan sauce is coming back at McDonald's. Number 8. The Red M&M Scare Long before Tucker Carlson was waging war against the M&Ms, the colorful candy was at the center of another ridiculous scandal. M&Ms will not be satisfied until every last cartoon character is deeply unappealing and totally androgynous. From 1976 to 1987, you might have noticed that the color red was missing from the M&M's lineup. That's because the FDA banned the use of red dye number two. Although the red M&M's used red dye number three and number 40, the candy's manufacturer discontinued the color due to confusion and concern. But even without the reds, Americans continued to think M&M's were out of this world, and in the 1980s, they were right, M&M's orbited the Earth with the astronaut. Orange was introduced as a replacement, but consumers remained nostalgic for red. Occasionally, red returned for holiday packages, leading people to write, why do I have to buy a whole year's supply? After 11 years, red finally returned as an official color, ironically going on to become the brand's central spokes candy. The reds are being brought back from the dead due to popular demand and the manufacturer's feeling that the red dye scare has faded from the public's mind. Number 7. Disgusting Domino's People In April 2009, Domino's Pizza went viral for all the wrong and most disgusting reasons. In five videos that were posted on YouTube, Domino's employee Michael Anthony Setzer used his nose and buttocks to seemingly desecrate pizza toppings. Two Domino's pizza workers in North Carolina are in big trouble with the food police and the real police for making this video and posting it on YouTube. His co-worker slash accomplice, Christy Lynn Hammonds, announced that the pies would be sent out. The two underestimated the power of the internet, as the videos soon gained millions of views and attention from the press. 
Of course, we know that their take, the people in the video, said, well, this was all a joke, and they say they never served the food. Getting fired wasn't even the more serious repercussion. Charged with a felony for food contamination, both would do jail time and be forced to pay fees. Her former co-worker, Michael Satzer, didn't want to talk either. Do you want to defend yourself at all? Not today. He ran from court after both made their initial appearances before a judge on felony charges for tampering with food. Domino's eventually recovered from this PR nightmare, but considering how many people continue to ruin their lives on social media, this cautionary tale shouldn't be forgotten. Number 6. Radioactive Oatmeal Oatmeal is a healthy way to start the day, assuming it isn't radioactive. Abandoned as a child, Fred Boyce was one of many sent to what is now called the Walter E. Fernald Developmental Center, an establishment for people with developmental disabilities. As you might have guessed, the children weren't treated with the dignity they deserved. These boys did not know uh, what was being given to them, nor did their parents. Aspiring for a better life, Boyce joined the Science Club, which was entitled to a free breakfast. Little did the students know that their oatmeal contained radioactive tracers. And they were given uh, radioactive calcium and other uh, radioisotopes. Every morning? In their, in their oatmeal. It was either mixed into the oatmeal or in the milk. Fed to more than 70 kids, this experiment was part of a quote-unquote nutritional study that MIT and Quaker Oats sponsored. Although this happened in the 40s and 50s, it wouldn't come to light until the 90s, when Boyce and others affected received a sizable settlement. These boys grew into men and did not find out what had been done to them till the 90s. Number 5. Subway Chicken, now with 50% chicken? Whether it's a six-inch chicken teriyaki sub or a foot-long chicken breast, it's only natural for Subway patrons to assume that the chicken in a chicken sandwich is 100%, well, chicken. Why mess with the sweet onion teriyaki, Chuck? Man, this ain't messing. It's perfecting with marinated chicken and double cheese. Sweet and savory. Kind of like you and me, Chuck. Imagine their surprise when a Canadian news program conducted a DNA test in 2017, finding only 53.6% chicken in Subway's oven-roasted chicken and 42.8% in their chicken strips. The rest was mainly comprised of soy. We expected 100% chicken. Subway's chicken samples have the least amount of chicken DNA and the most amount of fillers compared to the others. You're getting these inexpensive fillers that aren't as nutritious for you. Subway argued that the report was 100% wrong, reaching out to two independent labs that found less than 1% of soy in the samples provided. Subway proceeded to sue CBC Marketplace for $210 million. This got press all over the world. Subway now suing CBC for $210 million, claiming the report was defamatory and absolutely false. Subway contends that its chicken is 100% white meat. The story still wasn't the best look for Subway, although it's been widely overshadowed by another scandal that's still top of mind. I have the pants, of course. These are the, uh, the, infamous, uh, the infamous jeans that as I said, have become pretty much more famous than I am. Number four, finger licking lawsuit. People often forget that Colonel Sanders was an actual person and not just a fast food mascot. It looks like you've learned to make great chicken. Only way to serve our customers right. They've also forgotten that time that the Colonel took KFC to court. Although Sanders sold KFC in 1964, he continued to act as its symbol. Sanders wasn't pleased that his image was being used to sell new products that he didn't create namely a cheaper recipe that replaced his classic chicken. Sanders decided to open a new restaurant, Claudia Sanders, the Colonel's Lady Dinner House. For more than 60 years, the Claudia Sanders Dinner House has been attracting customers from across the country. KFC's parent company, Hugh Bly Incorporated, pursued legal action, but the Colonel wasn't one to surrender. Sanders retaliated with a $122 million lawsuit against Hugh Bly. Eventually reaching a settlement, Sanders went on to sell the Colonel's Lady restaurant, where his original recipe is still served. Because this is true Kentucky cooking. Number 3. Hungry Enough to Eat a Horse Europe's food industry was rocked in 2013 when horse DNA was found in beef burgers and lasagnas across various grocery stores. The horse meat controversy began last month. Horse DNA was found in burgers stocked by some supermarket chains, including Tesco, Iceland and Lidl. 
Today, the beef saga has spread, affecting firms in the UK, Irish Republic, Poland and France. At the centre of the controversy was ABP Food Group and its subsidiaries, most notably supplier Silvercrest. In addition to supermarkets, horse meat was linked to Burger King, which had over 500 chains in the area. Burger King conducted DNA tests that found no traces of equine in their product. Although Burger King have said that their burgers weren't contaminated and it was just a precautionary measure. However, small trace levels were found in four samples from the Silvercrest plant. This led to Burger King cutting ties with Silvercrest, which didn't deliberately buy the horse meat, according to an investigation. Due to the runaway coverage of this story, they are switching to a different supplier for its British and Irish restaurants, purely as a voluntary and precautionary measure. While health risks weren't involved, the scandal brought up a serious supply chain problem that more people should still be talking about. Number 2. Expired Meat for Sale Deceiving retailers into purchasing horse meat is one thing, selling them out-of-date meat is another. In 2014, it was reported that Shanghai Hushi Food Company had supplied expired meat products to Burger King, KFC, McDonald's, Papa John's, Pizza Hut, and Starbucks locations in China. Shanghai authorities suspended operations at Shanghai Hushi after an investigation by the city's Dragon TV channel. It said Hoosie workers were repackaging and selling chicken and beef past its use by date. The tainted meat also reached other countries such as Japan. Conducting an undercover investigation, a reporter found Hushi employees processing meat after touching it without any gloves and dropping it on the floor. According to a Wednesday statement from the Municipal Public Security Bureau, Shanghai Hoosie Food Company Limited produced 5,108 crates of meat products using expired or moldy materials. By July, Hushi had lost its key clients, with the factory ceasing operation amid legal troubles. Although Hushi is Chinese-based, it should be noted that parent company OSI Group was founded in Chicago. Presenting a global issue, this largely forgotten story deserves a longer shelf life. Their parent brand apologized to Chinese consumers Monday, but by Tuesday, Starbucks says some of its coffee shops had sold food products using chicken sourced from the U.S.-owned Chinese food supplier. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Number 1. Fast Food Killer They say that fast food can be bad for one's health. This took on a new meaning in 1997 when fast food employees were targeted by Paul Dennis Reed. Reed was eventually convicted of killing seven restaurant workers in Nashville and Clarksville. Nicknamed the fast food killer, Reed arrived in Nashville in hopes of becoming a country music star. Instead, he went down as an infamous figure, committing multiple robberies and murders between February and April of that year. Reed targeted a Captain D's, McDonald's, and Baskin Robbins, claiming seven lives and nearly taking more. Reed killed employees at a Captain D's in Donaldson, a McDonald's in Hermitage, and a Baskin Robbins in Clarksville. These crimes matched Reed's MO as he previously served seven years for robbing a Houston steakhouse. Upon being captured again, Reed received multiple death sentences. Although he ultimately wasn't executed, Reed died in 2013. It's a disturbing dish that remains hard to digest. A doctor at Metro General Hospital here in town pronounced Paul Dennis Reed dead just before 6 o'clock. The convicted killer has been off death row and in the hospital for nearly a week now with some serious breathing trouble. Do you remember watching any of these scandals unfold? Let us know in the comments. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.